back. Just make sure you speak aloud. Uh, I'll reiterate the question so in case no one heard it. But uh, yeah. So, welcome to Step Up Bystander Intervention Training on Sexual Assault Prevention. My name is Sergeant Martinez, and I'm attached to BMM 764. Uh, for everyone else in the room uh, that isn't a part of 764, more than likely you'll be uh, seeing Staff Sergeant Spittler. He's with Manic 41 Dead Bravo. Uh, so if you do need to speak to someone, uh, seek him out or you can seek myself out after this and I'll be able to help out. Uh, before we get started, we need to establish some ground rules. Uh, so sexual assault is a serious topic. Don't make light of it. To make this class success, we need to uh, have everyone to participate. We hope that you'll be honest and respectful of others and their right to express their own opinions. However, if you have been sexually assaulted or know of someone that has been, uh, now is not the place nor the time to Bring that, bring that out. If you feel that you need to talk to somebody about it, uh, get in contact with me afterwards, or like I said, Staff Sergeant Spittler. Uh, my contact information is on the slide. Uh, make note of it. There'll be another opportunity at the end of the, the slides to take it down. Uh, the training should take approximately 90 minutes with a couple breaks in between. Uh, feel free to stop, uh, step outside if you feel the need to get a sip of water, uh, make a head call, take a phone call, uh, just come back in and re-engage in the class. So when we talk about sexual assault, the first thing that comes to mind uh, is rape. But sexual assault includes other crimes besides rape. But the important word there is crimes. The DOD defines sexual assault as intentional sexual contact characterized by the use of force, threats, intimidation, or abuse for authority, or when the victim does not or cannot consent. Just to break it down a little more, sexual assault is intentional and it's not an accident. We sometimes hear offenders say, I didn't mean to do it. Make no mistake, these acts are uh, intentionally committed. Sexual assault involves sexual contact. The topic of consent requires more attention, and we'll discuss that uh, later on. Reading the rest of the definition, the terms include a broad category of sexual offenses consisting of the following specific UCMJ offenses, rape, sexual assault, aggravated sexual contact, abusive sexual contact, forcible sodomy, or attempts to commit any of these acts. So now we know sexual assault includes multiple types of crime, but even attempting any of these is punishable under the UCMJ and other criminal laws. You may be thinking that sexual assault isn't really a problem in the Marine Corps. Think again though. Last year alone, 1,149 sexual assaults were reported in, uh, in FY29 or 2019. This is just a fraction of the actual numbers of assaults believed to have taken place that year. According to the DOD, it's estimated that approximately 90% of sexual assaults in the military go unreported. The majority of sexual assaults reported involve junior Marines, E134, 18 to 24 years old. Victims are both male and female. Sexual assault is devastating to individuals who are victims of the crime, to their friends and families, and to the Marine Corps. It goes against our core values of honor, courage, and commitment, and bottom line, sexual assault has, uh, is not in line with the, who we are as Marines. We just define sexual assault, which is sometimes confused with sexual harassment. The easiest way to remember the difference between the two is that sexual assault involves unwanted sexual contact. Sexual harassment involves unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal, physical contact or conduct of a sexual nature that can make working in the shop uncomfortable. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about consent. Um, how would you guys describe consent? Just a few examples. Asking for permission. Okay, that's a good one, yeah. Anyone else? So in a nutshell, consent is giving and receiving permission to engage sexual in sexual activity. Now we're gonna go over the DOD definition. Consent is defined as words or overt acts indicating the freely given agreement to the sexual conduct at issue by a competent person. Consent must be freely given. It can be given verbally or non-verbally, such as with body language or facial expression that indicate everyone involved is willing to participate. On the next slide, we'll go into what defines a competent person 
let's read a little bit more of the definition though. An expression of lack of consent through words or conduct means there is no consent. Lack of verbal or physical resistance or submission resulting from the accused use of force, threat of force, or placing another person in fear does not constitute consent. One of the most common myths about consent is that you have consent unless you hear the word no. That is not the case. As we just heard, consent can be verbal or nonverbal. Never make assumptions. If you are unsure, ask the other person or back off. There are instances where a person may freeze and not be able to directly say no. Force, threat of force, or fear can prevent someone from saying no or physically resisting an assault. This does not mean that consent has been given. Another common myth is that sexual assault cannot take place when the people involved are in a relationship or have had sexual contact before. Just because you have had consent uh, to have sex in the past doesn't mean you always have it. Each person must consent each time they engage in sexual activity and throughout the activity. No matter what you heard, it doesn't mean how a person is dressed. No one has to be sexually assaulted. Now we're gonna address what makes a confident person. If the person is sleeping or incapacitated, such as due to age, alcohol, or drugs, or mental incapacity, there is no consent. The important thing to remember about consent is that you should never, never make assumptions or guesses about what the other person is thinking or feeling. Again, if there is any doubt at any point, ask your partner if he or she is okay or just back off. Now we're going to watch a short drama that depicts sexual assault involving Marines. As we're watching, take note of actions and behaviors that are counter to our core values. We'll talk about them after the drama. I 
Step inside my soul, transformation coming soon. What to do? I just spread for open plane. As the heat consumes my brain, I said it become insane. I peer into the starlight. My vision swings and clears like a file in the distance. It's a chick flick. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Thank you. 
looking at you wishing that I could I'm looking at you wishing that you would You looking at me thinking that you should It's okay, go ahead, it's all good Time for another drink? Nope, I'm dead Hey buddy, grab me one of those cups What, are you going to be hanging here? I see how it's going to be You're really gonna punk out at me like that? Hey. Hey! Hey, don't be like that. I mean, what? Don't be a little tease. We're having a good time. Come on. As Marines, we pride ourselves on being ready whenever our nation calls. And we always act as our brothers and sisters keepers to make sure they overcome any obstacle and experience no harm. This means protecting them from shameful and disgusting crimes such as sexual assault. Doing so is fundamental to our Marine Corps ethos and our core principles. We never leave a fallen comrade behind. Each and every one of us is responsible for stepping up whenever we witness a situation that could lead to a sexual assault. This takes courage. I'm talking about moral courage, not just the physical courage we rely on when we face danger. As Marines, we are defined not only by what we do on the battlefield, but also by what we do every day when we demonstrate the moral courage to do the right thing all the time. A failure to act is not only inconsistent with who we are, but it also degrades our traditions and our reputation, threatens our cohesion and morale, and hurts our fellow Marines. In the scenes you just witnessed, there were many chances for Marines to intervene and stop the sexual assault. They failed to heed the warning signs and prevent the assault with devastating consequences. This story did not have to end in an assault. After all, would you turn a blind eye and let this happen to one of your fellow Marines? Or would you remember your role as your brothers and sisters keepers? Would you have the awareness to recognize a dangerous situation and the courage to step up and do the right thing? We're gonna do a quick
rewind and see just exactly what that could have looked like. I'm sure uh, some of your friends could give you a ride. They're heading back to the base, okay? I, I saw him follow her. I saw him try to get her alone. I didn't step up. So... step up. And now? Yo, that does not look right. Uh, if she's not into it, she can always just move away. Yo, but she probably doesn't want to cause a ruckus, because that dude is just... Yeah, yeah, I know. Look, I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, do you know where the head is? Yeah, it's upstairs. Look, I wasn't talking to you, all right? Can you just show me? Did she just cough a little bit? Actually, bro, I think she just did you a solid. I really don't think Kate's feeling this right now. No need to push it. You don't think so? Bro, look, I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah, what I'm saying is sometimes girls say no when they mean yes. What? No, that that's jacked up. Look, if Kate's not showing you she's feeling, man, you just... Man, you need to back off, okay? All right. All right. It just didn't look right. But I didn't want to get in the middle of it. I didn't step up. But I should have. Hey, 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 hey,
Are you sure about this girl? I don't know if I trust any of these knuckleheads not to drop me. Person. Yeah, I'd really rather not. Alright, who's next? They, we, could see she clearly didn't want to. But I figured, I had a choice. I didn't step up. What should have happened though. For Kate, the bystander's failure to step up and intervene had a life had a life altering impact. But Kate was not the only one to suffer. As you will see in the final segment of this drama, there was a direct effect on unit cohesion and morale. Watching this story in reverse, you can see the many opportunities for Kate's fellow Marines to intervene. Remember that any sexual contact without consent is sexual assault, period. Had just one person done the right thing, a Marine's life might not have been devastated that night. And the trust between these Marines might have been strengthened rather than broken. You can't count on that one person to be someone else. You're the one who has to step up. When you choose to step on those yellow footprints, you assume the responsibility that is greater than yourself. The responsibility to ensure the safety of the Marine to your left and right. This can mean preventing someone from becoming the victim of a sexual assault or from becoming a potential perpetrator. Sexual assault has serious consequences for both the victim and the offender. Regardless of the legal outcome, the lives of both of those Marines will be changed forever. Intervening, no matter how uncomfortable, is always the right thing to do. Don't be a bystander. That's not the Marine way. We have a bias for action. When a situation appears to be getting out of control, it's here we thrive. Intervene. Be in control. As you saw with Kate, sexual assault is a traumatic event. It can have lasting physical effects, not always visible, all the emotional scars that can include depression, flashbacks, and anxiety. If a sexual assault does occur, there are numerous resources available to support victims. All the resources on this slide provide confidentiality. The Marine Corps Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Program is available 24 seven to provide direct victim support, regardless of who you are, where and when the assault happened. Sapper goes everywhere Marines go, in garrison and deployed. Let's talk about Sapper personnel who can help. The SORF manages the program and supervises, them, supervises the victim advocates. The victim advocates walk the victims through each step of the reporting process, including going with the victim to law enforcement interviews 
and certain medical appointments if the victim so chooses. Along with victim advocates, we also have civilian advocates, and they can be found at the Marine and Family Programs. Chaplains can provide spiritual guidance and support to victims. Chaplains have what's called absolute privilege and don't have to tell anyone about the sexual assault. Healthcare personnel include medical personnel and counselors. Medical personnel provide care for sexual assault uh, related injuries and collect forensic, forensic evidence. Counselors support victims' emotional recovery. The Victims Legal Council, or VLC, offers victim legal represent representation and can address their legal questions. Protecting the victim's privacy and confidentiality is extremely important to the type of program. So much so that what the victim says to a victim advocate or a sorry is protected under Military Rule of Evidence 514. What this means is that a victim can instruct their victim advocate or SARP not to talk about their conversations with anyone else, even at a court martial, and the victim advocate or SARP will not do so. Now that we've talked about personnel that can assist victims of sexual assault, let's talk more about the available reporting options. It's important for victims of sexual assault to get the help they need as soon as possible. But coming forward to report such a traumatic event can be very difficult. But that's why the staff program offers two reporting options, unrestricted and restricted. Can anyone tell me what an unrestricted reporting option is? Yes. So yes, just like you said, it initiates an official law enforcement investigation and the support of the chain of command. When you file an unrestricted report, not everyone in the command will know about the sexual assault. The information is limited only to those leaders who have the need to know. The command will protect your privacy. In restricted reporting, this allows the victim to report confidenti confidentially and receive help without any investigation or command involvement. This option allows victims who need more time or simply don't feel comfortable coming forward to receive support services without delay. When you file a restricted report, it remains confidential with the SARC and the victim advocate. A victim can convert a restricted report to an unrestricted at any time. Regardless of the type of report a victim files, they will have access to victim-centered support services, including medical treatment and counseling. If you want to file a restricted report, you can only talk to a SARC, victim advocate, chaplain, the VLC, or healthcare personnel. The only exception to confidentiality is in the state of California, where healthcare personnel are required to report sexual assaults. So we just briefly talked about both the unrestricted and reporting options. I want to stress again that regardless of the report type, all victims will have access to victim advocacy, advocacy counseling, and victims legal counsel. Now let's talk about some more differences between unrestricted and reporting, uh, restricted reporting options. When it comes to law enforcement involvement, an unrestricted report triggers an official investigation and the command is notified to lend their support to the victim. A restricted report does not have law enforcement or command involvement. For unrestricted reports, the victim can request a military protective order and, and an expedited transfer with assistance from their victim advocate. MPOs ensure the safety of the victim from the alleged offender by ordering the alleged offender to have no contact at all with the victim. An MPO is issued by the CO and remains in effect until the CO terminates it. Expedited transfers allow victims to request an early transfer from the unit through a special process. The SARC and victim advocate can walk the victim through their requesting this transfer. I want to point out that MPOs and expedited transfers are not available to those who file a restricted report. The Marine Corps encourages unrestricted reporting to ensure that victims are cared for and have access to all available resources. The Marine Corps also wants to be able to ensure that offenders can be held accountable. But if the victim only feels comfortable with the restricted report, they should make that choice. The decision is always with the victim. What if the alleged offender is the commander or any chain of command? With the support of the SARC or victim advocate, the victim in such a case can go outside of the chain of command to report the sexual assault. Victims can go to the next senior commanding officer to request masks, contact an inspector general, 
or talk to the VMC. It's important to remember that if the victim chooses to report to the next senior command officer, request mass, or contact an inspector general, the action will trigger an investigation and the restricted reporting option will no longer be available. Remember that your victim advocate is there to walk you through this process. So what about Ryan? How do you think the decision to commit this crime changed his life? An offender risks not only his credibility and reputation, but will also be held accountable for his, his or her actions under the UCMJ. Sexual assault is punishable under the UCMJ with the following maximum penalties. Confinement up to life without parole, total loss of all paying allowances, dishonorable discharge or dismissal from service, reduction to pay grade E1. While not a UCMJ punishment, an offender can also be required to register as a sex offender. This can mean you're limited as to where you can live, work, and travel. It will affect you for the rest of your life. As you witnessed in Kate's story, sexual assault is a serious and devastating crime. Sexual assault goes against the very fabric of our core values of honor, courage, and commitment. When it happens to one of us, it happens to all of us. That's why it's critical that we as Marines be active bystanders and step up to prevent a sexual assault from occurring. You may be saving someone's life. As the Sergeant Major said, when you choose to step on those yellow footprints, you assume a responsibility that is greater than yourself, the responsibility to ensure the safety and the Marines to your left and right. It is our responsibility to take care of our fellow Marines. I hope that we will leave here today not just aware of the issue of sexual assault, but also acknowledging that it occurs within the Marine Corps. I now hope you understand your responsibility to step up and make a difference. Before we conclude this training, I want everyone to write down this contact information uh, so you can have it to use. Also, put uh, the secondary numbers, the 877 numbers, uh, if you can't reach myself. I'm available to answer any questions, so seek me out at any time. At this time, are there any questions on any of the training that was provided? Okay. Like I said, if you have any questions or just want to see me afterwards, uh, I'll be here for a few minutes. Uh, if there are no questions, then I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, good afternoon, Sergeant. Uh, so I have a question about how he snuck in that picture without, like, I know she didn't like, give consent, but that wouldn't be sexual assault, right? Or what would that constitute? It's just negative behavior. It doesn't constitute sexual assault, but it is just negative behavior that goes against our values. Any other questions? Okay, like I said, thank you for your time, and I hope you uh, enjoyed this period of instruction. As you leave, just take a look around and pick up any trash that you may see. Thank you. <laughs>